and it's not his ear is not where he can't hear you, right? The problem is, right, we've been doing things to where he refuses to listen to us. He can hear us, but he's not listening, right? Because we have to get ourselves right. Right? Go ahead. Behold your iniquity says what? Behold your iniquity says behold your iniquities. We know iniquity is another word for sin. Your sin, go ahead. But your iniquities have separated have what? Separated. separated. And our sins as a people, as a nation, have separated us, go ahead. Between you and your God. That's why we got it. We've been separated from our God through sin. And because of this separation, we don't have... We came from roaches on the floor, a notice on the door, baking soda in the jar, but now we focus on the law. It's like soap up in a cloth, the way it's soaking and it wash. It's something like good dope, cause it's potent and it's raw. I used to post up out of store, work stash behind the door. Everything I had was pure, so fiends was coming back for more. The most high opened my eyes, and then I seen that I was flawed. Now I'm addicted to these laws, because they potent and they raw. I was in and out of jail, cause in the streets, yeah, I was lost. Trying to be like all the hustlers, they don't tell you it's a cause. Shalom, 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 family. First and foremost, I have to give all praises, all glory, and all honor to the Most High God, Yahweh. Of course, I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. It's your brother, Ariala of Sakari, and I am excited to present to you, the nation of Israel, the official Hebrew Israelite Bible. Now, this has been the culmination of four long years of hard work. And it is available for purchase at HIBOfficialZion.com. Get yours today. Psalms 19 verse 7. Of, uh, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Making wise the simple. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. You see how that, that, that is through the Spirit, right? It says, well, the law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul, showing you that perfection only comes through keeping the laws of God, right? Go ahead. Converting the soul, the testimony of the Lord is sure. The testimony of the Lord is sure, right? These scriptures, go ahead. Making wise, making, what? making wise, and get profound wisdom, go ahead. Making wise the simple. Through the simplest of concepts, right? Making wise the simple. What psalm right? was that? What's up? What psalm was that? Psalm chapter 19, the seventh verse, right? Psalm 19 and 7. This is all it's beginning, go ahead. He, he, he first asked you about truth, right? This I say he first asked you about truth when you came up, right? This leads us all the way back here. Right. Psalms 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. He said the righteousness of the Lord is an everlasting righteousness. Right? Give me Deuteronomy 6 25. Let's see what is the righteousness of the Lord. What would you say righteousness is? What is righteousness? I don't trust my previous definition. Okay. Okay. I mean, now we, we just building that, so you know. Whether you're wrong or not, you're gonna get the right answer. Being in right standing with God. Okay, being in right standing with God. What did they look like? Walking uprightly. Walking uprightly in your moral mannerisms. Okay. Okay. I mean, you're, you're vague, but you, you ain't wrong. Though. You ain't wrong, right? Let's see. if We gonna get the actual definition of righteousness. That's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter six, verse twenty-five. Yeah. Like I said, the righteousness of the Lord is an everlasting righteousness. Meaning, this right, the definition of righteousness, the way to achieve righteousness, will never go away, right? Everlasting right. Go ahead. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness. It shall be what? It shall be our righteousness. So whatever you're gonna say is our righteousness. Right? Okay. If we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, see that? Go ahead. as he hath commanded us. Just like this. Our righteousness is keeping the commandments of God as he has commanded us. You see that? So it says what? Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, right? The keeping of the, the laws of God is an everlasting thing. As long as you're doing those things, you always have the ability to be categorized as righteous, right? You keep the laws of God, you have the ability to be categorized as righteous. All right, go ahead. And thy law, and thy law is the truth. Now, law is the truth, right? That righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. 
Uh, law is the truth. Right? I see what you did, though. You see how you started the truth. And through the spirit, though, they weren't even intentional. Right? That was completely through the spirit, man. Right? And it's, it's funny, I was reading Psalm 9, 19, 91, 109, and 119 this morning. Okay. So for us to hit that. Get, get, the, get the Psalm 119. You, you read all the way through it? Not all the way through it. That's a beautiful song. Give me that uh, Psalm 19 and 59. Let's go. Let's go to Psalm 119. Right? Let me show you something. Come on, this Bob. is Psalm 59. This is Psalm 119, verse 59. I thought on my way. I thought on my way. She said, You already been in the mindset of trying to figure out what it is that you need to be doing to be pleasing in your God's eye. Right? He said, I thought on my ways. I thought on my ways and, tur and turned my feet unto thy testimony. Turned my feet to thy testimony. Once I realized all the things that I was in error about, and I realized all the things that I was misled about, right? Okay, I see what the truth is. Now I've turned my feet towards the righteousness and the testimonies of the Lord, right? I made haste. I made what? I made haste. What the word haste means? Quickly. Quickly. I made haste. I didn't, I didn't hesitate. I didn't think twice. Yeah, that's a powerful information there, man. Right? I made haste. I made haste and delay not and delay not going to keep thy commandments. To do what? To keep, keep thy, thy commandments. commandments. I made haste and delay not to keep the commandments of the Lord. You see, bro? I got a question, bro. Go ahead. This is this is this is stirring under my spirit, bro. How did we get in here and how do we get back? I can hear you, bro. How did we get in? How did we get here? How do we get here? And how, back how do we get back? And how do we get back? What you you can pull whatever you want to pull. Not, and, and not as an individual, not as an individual. As a nation. I didn't, I didn't get here individually. Right, you got here as a nation. So how did I get to that? I had said, get on. Isaiah 59. Started from the top. That's the scripture the Jews don't like to talk about. What's that? I didn't say that out loud. But that's just the man. You right? You right? Who? Uh, the Jews like to talk about this, group. Right? right? The the them the Jews. There you go. The Jews like to talk about this, group. There you go, brother. Right? 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 The false sites. Right? You got the Deuteronomy. Let me show you how we got it. This is the Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, verse fifteen. But it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Right. So you have. Very specific thing that the Lord told us to do. He said, your ass better listen, right? Our forefathers took an oath and said, we'll listen, right? But he said, if you do listen, there are particular things that you get as benefits to listening and being obedient, but then there are particular things that you get, right, as a punishment and as a curse if you refuse to listen, right? Read that again. Come, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, right. and thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments, to observe to do all his commandments. You start breaking his laws, right? And his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses, that all these curses, that all these curses, that all these curses, so curses is a byproduct of breaking the law, right? Okay, go ahead. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And overtake you, right? So that's how we got here. Go to uh, verse 68. Right, hold it. Right, go ahead. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 1. Go. Go, to, go to Daniel 9 first. Go to Daniel 9. Go to Daniel 9. What was the last one you just read? That was Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Yeah. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. We're going to go to Daniel 9. I'm going to show you something. Let's okay. verse 8. Let's say all these curses have, have been poured out of fun. About two more verses. Okay, cool. It's Isaiah 59 verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not short that it cannot save. Neither is, ear, neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Showing you that we're already in a downtrodden state. It said his, the Lord's arm, is, his hand is not too short that he can, cannot save you. If we need saving, then we're already downtrodden, right? Okay, cool. And it's not his ear is not where he can't hear you, right? The problem is, right? We've been doing things to where he refuses to listen to us. He can hear us, but he's not listening, right? Because we have to get ourselves right, right? Go ahead. Behold your iniquity says what? Behold your iniquity says behold your iniquities. We know iniquity is another word for sin. Your sin, go ahead. But your iniquities have separated. Have what? Separated. separated. Our sins as a people, as a nation, have separated us. Go ahead. Between you and your God. That's why we got it. 
we've been separated from our God through sin, and because of this separation, he don't have as a, over us as a nation. He doesn't have that same level of responsibility towards preventing our enemies from doing whatever the hell they wanted to. You see what I'm saying? All those curses were promised to happen to us if we began to break His law, right? So from verse 15 all the way down to 68, there are nothing but bad things that are going to happen to our people. All have been happening to our people since we began to break His law, right? Go ahead. Hosea 5 and 15. Yeah. I will go and return to my place. This is what the Lord said. He said, I will go and return to my place. I'm going to get the hell out of the way. Right? Go ahead. Till they acknowledge their offense. Till you acknowledge your offense. So as a people, we've offended our God. Right? And we have, as a people, acknowledged that offense. Right? As a people, we still think we can sin and be okay. We still think we can sin and our God is going to be listening to our prayers whole time he not listen whole time we've been separated and the only way to re you know revamp their relationship the only way to bring their relationship back together to weave that back together is through his son the mediator by keeping the laws and faith on him you with me that's the only hope we got right i will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face is what and seek my face and we seek his face through actually keeping his law that's how we seek it you don't seek his face by, you know, walking around like nothing's going on as long as you just think about like Jesus here and there, right? And say hallelujah and tap dance in church on Sunday. You see what I'm saying? That's not seeking the face of God. You know, we we got to yeah. seek his face by saying we have done wickedness. We have heard according to what the truth is, right? And we're going to walk in it. That's when you start to seek the face of the Lord, right? By fearing the judgment that comes from breaking his law, right? Go ahead. In their affliction, they will seek me early. In their affliction, right? Once you have been separated and, and now you're going through all these curses, that's when we're going to begin to seek them. You see what I'm saying? That's what we're doing now. That's what we're trying to get our people to realize this is the condition we're in and this is why, right? This is Isaiah 59, verse number two again. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins. I've hid, your, hid his face from you. See that? Your sins have, sin, have hid his face from you. Right? The Lord's face is hidden from his people because of the amount of wickedness and sin that we do and perpetuate as a people. Right? Go ahead. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. He will not hear. He's not listening to us until we stop sinning. That's just what it is. This is John chapter 9 verse 31 yeah. Now we know that God heareth not sinners what? God heareth not, not sinners so We are here sinning Does God hear us? That's what he just said right? This is how the words of Christ said what? Now I know that God heareth not sinners It says, it says now, we, uh, now we know that God heareth not sinners But if any man be a worshiper of God And doeth his will do His will What's his will brother? He said, if you be a worshiper of God and do his will, do not, him he hear it. That's who he hears. What you say? I just say, do not conform to the pattern of his world. But okay, what's the will of God? Give me Psalm 48. Let me show you what the will is. You can see that this book is more, more simple than you thought. Let me show you. We found out that the truth was keeping the law, right? We found out that righteousness was keeping the law, right? We found out that wisdom was keeping the law. Right? Let's see what the will of the Father is. Go ahead. This is a Psalm chapter 40, verse 8. Yeah. I delight to do thy will. This is what? I, I delight, delight to do thy will. will. Right? So this is David saying, well, I delight to do the will of God. Right? Go ahead. Oh my God, right? yea, thy law, thy, what? thy, thy law, law, thy law man. is within my heart. What's the will of God? Mm. <laughs> Read it one more time. Read it again. This is uh, Psalm chapter 40, verse 8. No. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. What's his will? To have the law in the heart. To have the law in his heart, right? If you have the law in your heart and you're committing yourself to keeping the law, you're fulfilling the will of God. You see how everything goes back to the law, bro? It's crazy, right? So even in the New Testament, it's the same thing. From Romans 2 and verse 18, and knowest his will and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. What? 
being instructed out of the law. It says the will and doing the things that are most excellent happens when you operate out of the instructions of the law. You do what's most excellent to the Lord when you're operating out of what was instructed in his law. Beautiful. Right, give me that in Daniel 9. You asked how we got here though. Let's get back to it. Right, I'll show you another uh, instance of, of how, you know, the, the prophets already told us how we end up in this situation. This is the book of Daniel chapter 9 verse 11. Bring it up. Yeah, all Israel have transgressed thy law. Even by departing. It says all Israel has transgressed thy law. You see that we've sinned again. Right? Even by departing completely detaching ourselves from it. Right? Go ahead. Yeah, all Israel have transgressed thy law. Right. Even by departing. Go ahead. That they might not obey thy voice. Go ahead. So, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon says, what? the Therefore, the curse is poured upon. See, once we stop listening to the Lord, the curse was poured upon us. You see that, brother? So all the things that happen to us, all the things that have been happening to us and still happen to us to this day, is happening because the curse is poured upon us for departing from the law of God. You see that? Go ahead. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us and the oath that is written in the law of Moses. And the what? And the oath that is written in the law of Moses. What was that oath? You do what you're supposed to, you get life. You do what you're not supposed to, you get death. I said it before you, this day, choose life, don't choose death. I'm begging you, begging us, don't choose death. Right? Because it's going to come if your ass choose. Right? Give me that in Psalm 15. I will finish this and give me Psalm 15. Go. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against well, we read in Deuteronomy 28 and 15, where it's talking about, right, these curses are going to happen if we transgress the laws, if we don't hearken to the voice of the Lord, right? That's that oath that was written in the law of Moses, right? It's been poured upon us, and it has been confirmed upon us as a people, right? You got that, uh, all right, 15, 15 and 14. This is the book of Sarah, chapter 15, verse 14. He himself made man from the beginning. From the beginning. He himself made man from the beginning and left him in the hand of his counsel. Right, he left us in the hand of our counsel. He's given us this illusion of free will to where we can, you know, have an imagination and make decisions within our imagination. Right? He left us in the hands of our counsel. Go ahead. He himself made man from the beginning and left him in the hand of his counsel. If thou wilt to keep the commandments, if thou wilt to keep the commandments, he put you here, he let you make a decision in your mind whether you will or will not keep the commandments of God. Go ahead. If thou wilt to keep the commandments and to perform acceptable faithfulness, and to perform acceptable faithfulness, says the only way you can perform acceptable faithfulness to God is by keeping his commandments. Right? That you show that you're faithful to God by within your your psyche, you're making a choice to please. Him. Right? Go ahead. Verse 16. He has set fire and water. He says what? He has set fire and water before thee. He said fire and water right in front of you. Right? Go ahead. Stretch forth thy hand uh -huh. unto whether thou wilt. Stretch forth your hand to whether you will. You're gonna put your hand in fire, right? And burn yourself, or you're gonna put your hand in water. Right? And heal yourself. And cleanse yourself. Purify yourself. Right? You have those two options right in front of you. Every chance you make, every choice you make. Right? He said you put it right in front of you. Fire and water. Go ahead. He has set fire and water before thee. Right? Stretch forth thy hand unto whether thou wilt. That's what we did as a nation. We chose fire. You see that? Go ahead. Verse 17. Before man is life and death. Before man is life and death. Righteousness and wickedness. Keeping the laws versus not. Go ahead. Before man is life and death. Go ahead. And whether him like it. Whatever you like. You like to be wicked? You like to be a nigga? You like to be a sinner? Right? Go ahead. And whether him like it shall be given him. Yeah, the, the consequence of that is going to be given to him. So that's what happened to us as a nation of people. We like to sin. We like to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Right? The things that were displeasing to our God. The things that were contrary to the oath that we made. And so he gave us over to those curses. You see what I'm saying, bro? So now it's time for us to come back. Start keeping the laws of God. Start doing the things that are necessary to please. Romans 2. God's will in Romans 2. What was that? Romans 2 and 18. You said Romans 2 and 18? You talking about 2 and 18? Yeah, there was, there was, there was the book called Syrac Ecclesiasticus. You familiar with the Apocrypha? Yeah. Yeah, so there was Syrac 15 starting at verse 14 through 18, I believe. 
Did he read Romans no. 2? He read Romans 2 and 18 for sure. Showing yeah. you Psalms 40 and 8. Psalm 40 and 8 with the will. God's will. Exactly. And then Romans 2. Romans 2 and 18 combined 18. to that showing you that the acceptable, what, what it was, the excellence to perform the excellence of God was to do his will, which was the law. You find in the law. Exactly. Yep. Y'all glad you had a good memory. Probably would have been better to have your phone out, you know, put these in your notes. Okay. But, you know, this is where we be at. We're going to be out here in Wednesday for now. In the street. Something like that. Right? So, yeah, we, go ahead. I, I have a question. So a lot of my Christians. got to be the last question. Bro. I know what you mean. I got, uh, my Christian friends always say, you know, when you're waiting on the Lord. But this sounds like he's waiting on us. Yeah, for sure. So. And like I said, I will, I will remove myself until they acknowledge their own feet. See so he's waiting on us to acknowledge our offense. So when it comes to end times conversations, uh, rapture, I, I keep asking about Revelation 11 and sackcloth, and how do we collectively, are we waiting for him to show up? Do we play out with the on Zion? Hopefully he's waiting he's to he's on the uh -huh. lake to be seen. On the earth. That's what he's waiting on. Oh. Right? Say it one more time. Say it one more time, brother. He's, he's waiting, waiting on the elect. You familiar with the term elect? Yes, sir. What, who are the elect? What are they? How do you know who the elect are? Good question. Let me revelation six. Good question. I'm a relationship. Well, that's what it is elect. Yeah, okay. Those who do his will, those who keep his commandments. Well, it's well, deeper than that. It's yeah. deeper than that. Because, yeah, those that do the will and keep his commandments. But these are really the 12,000 of each tribe of Israel, right? The, the chosen. The, the governing body of the Israelites. These are going to be the people that are out here doing what we're doing right now. Is this right? like 144,000 times? Okay. Yeah, this is Revelation chapter 7. Chapter, you want to the top? Okay. This is Re Revelation chapter 7. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, holding the, uh, holding the, four, yeah, four, like it. Holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and his wind. Uh, having the seal of the living God, and he cried to the cried with a loud voice. He had one angel speaking to another angel, crying with a voice. Go ahead cry with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. So you had these four angels they spoke about in the first verse, right? They were holding the winds of the earth, not letting them blow. Those winds represent destruction that's going to come across the earth. Okay, this deep prophecy right here, this revelation, right? So he said there's another, another angel, right, that rose and was telling them, don't do anything yet, right? Go ahead. Verse 3 saying hurt not the earth, uh -huh. neither the sea. It says hurt not the earth, neither the sea. That's representative of humans. We're talking about the humans. Don't hurt the people on the earth. You ain't going in. Uh, neither the sea nor the trees. Uh -huh. So we have said, we still the servants of our God. So they're, they're talking about the elect. Go ahead. In their foreheads. So, so first and foremost, the elect, the servants of the Lord have to be sealed before anything happens. You with me? We're getting closer and closer to that. More and more of our people are waking up. Let's see who the elect are. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand. One hundred and forty-four thousand. That's the elect, those servants of the, the holy of holies of our Lord. Right, go ahead. Uh, so the hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of all the tribes of the children of Israel. We know it's twelve tribes. 144,000 divided by 12 tribes, 12,000 each tribe. See that? So now it's going to tell you all the different 12, right? And then you have of, of the tribe of Judah, sealed 12,000. The tribe of Reuben, sealed 12,000. Of the tribe, the tribe of Asher, sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Natali, if, if Natali, we're sealed 12,000. We're going to do that the whole way. Go to, which, to which part? Verse 9. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude. So you had the 144,000 that they need to be sealed. That's what everything is waiting on. The angels that have the, the power to destroy the earth to start, you know, actually 
bringing the judgment on the earth are waiting on these people to be sealed. Give me in uh, Ezekiel chapter 9. Go to the top. Right, go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry, go to the top. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne. See, that? so this is that group of people you were talking about earlier. Right, you thought he was talking about the heathens, but this is talking about our people that are scattered. That once the elect are sealed, right, once the elect are raised up, given their glorious bodies, right, these are the people who are going to be gathered, right, of our people that are, are stretched across the earth that haven't had the opportunity to be uh, put into this, this truth. They're going to be given, granted, the opportunity to accept or deny the truth, and then that's where you get the judgment is happening to those people that, that, that don't accept the truth. You see what I'm saying? But this is it. Yeah, verse 9. And after this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude. So after you have the 144,000, you have a great multitude of Israelites that I've been, you know, captured, so to say, right? Gathered up from across. They call, they call them the dispersed of Israel, right? The dispersed of Israel are going to be gathered up right here. Go ahead. All right. Which no man could number of all nations. And kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palms in their hands. Right. What was, what was your uh, question about? That? I was trying to get clarity. Okay. Cool. To okay. Cool. So when you deal with, go to the blue letter and get the word kindred. Get the word kindred in the blue letter right there in, in Revelation seven. Can it say these people in, from different nations, tongues? Tribes, lands, things of that nature. Right, we we're gonna show you something. We got Acts. Bring this up. Acts two. This is Acts chapter two, verse five. Yeah. And there was dwelling at Jerusalem. Right, this was in the time of Pentecost. Right, you had in Jerusalem. Everybody, all the Israelites are responsible for coming to Jerusalem for Pentecost. Right. Every every male is if you're an Israelite, you're responsible for keeping Pentecost every year. Right. So this is the time of Pentecost. Right. Go ahead. Uh, and there were the willing at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation, out of every nation, only in every nation, out of every nation, you had Jews, Israelites, devout men of, of every nation under heaven, every nation under heaven, you had a Jew from them. And they came back to Jerusalem to keep Pentecost. You see that? So even in the, right after the death of Christ, you have in the time of the Acts of the Apostles, the Israelites were already scattered into every land on the earth, and they were coming back home. Speaking in different languages and tongues and things of that nature, claiming different ethnic backgrounds, necessarily like national uh, citizenships, right? They were citizens in these different locations, but nevertheless, they were still Israelites coming back home to keep the Pentecost. So when you read that in Revelation 7, they talk about the different kindreds, the tongues, the tribes, they, 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 all the Israelites all over the place. See what I'm saying? Right? You got that? You know, you do that? Let me show you something. Right? You got the word uh, tribe. In, uh, or, or, or kindred in the uh, Greek. Let me show you this. Let me show you this. Bro. Let me show you this. Right? This that word. I'm going to show you. Right? Yeah, but it's important. It's important. Okay, cool. The term, I'm going to show you. You got nine, right? I'm going to go to the concordance. I'm going to show you. You have all these different words, right? The hill, the great multitude, no man could number, right? You have kindred, right? All these different kindreds. See what they say. What they say? Finally, right? Fool it. What they say? A tribe? What they say? Tribe. Okay, what they say? I'm the person descended from one of the twelve sons of the patriarch. You see that? So when they talk about the different kindreds, it says what? In the New Testament, this word is dedicated to somebody who descended from one of the 12 patriarchs of Jacob. You see that, brother? I know this is what you need. I know this is what you need. Right? In the spirit. You see that? So now we understand that when this, when this whole idea of salvation is presented to us in the scriptures, it's not talking about everybody getting salvation. It's talking about the people who are God's chosen from the beginning given. So the scripture about the outer court. Yeah, yeah, how, yeah. How does that come into play? I mean, it comes exactly like it says. It says, 
don't number the outer court because it is for the Gentile, right? So in our kingdom, they're still going to be serving our God. It's not like they're, they're going to just be exempt from serving God. They're going to have to serve God. They're going to have to, you know, perform sacrifices when they see anything in their nature. They're still going to be going on, but they're not welcome into the inner court like Israelites are. The Israelites have the ability to go into the inner court. You with me? Yeah, yeah, it says yeah. those heathens got to stay on the outer court showing us separation. You see what I'm saying? Right. They don't get to walk through the pearl door on the gold streets with the river with the trees. They don't well, give me the uh, Revelation 22. 22. 21. 21. Yeah, yeah. 21 and 12. Wow, bring it out. 12, 12, 12, 12. I don't even bring this out. I don't bring this out. Nearly enough. 21 and 12. This is Revelation chapter 21, verse 12. Read it up. Read it Verse 2, and I, John, saw the holy city. This is a revelation. He said, John, he, he got this vision. He said, I see the holy city. Right? Go ahead. New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Right? You see that? It's a new Jerusalem coming down. But this is symbolic for the elect of God. But the, with the elect come that, that new uh, kingdom that's going to be attached to the Israelites. Right? Says this, this new kingdom, right? This, this is to prove that. Revelation 13 and 12. He that overcometh, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Oh, my bad. Revelation 13, uh, 3 and 12. Him that over him that overcometh, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Him that overcomes, right? Talking about the link. I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God. See what? The name of the city of my God. Of these people are operating as pillars in this city, right? And they have the name of the city of God written on them. Okay? Which is New Jerusalem. Which is New Jerusalem. So when you go back to Revelation 21, that, that holy city coming down is actually the elect and the salvation that comes with the election, right? Now go back to uh, Uh, Revelation 21 verse 2 and I John saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband verse 12 and had a wall great and high he said this new Jerusalem had a wall great and high right we're talking about that pearly gate but let's see what it really looks like right go ahead and had 12 gates see what and had 12, 12 gates how many gates this wall had 12 gates that's not a gate you said what? That's a lot of gates. But is it just enough for a certain for a nation of people to make it? Right. Just enough for them 12 tribes in the land. Right? You see that? Amen. So this, this this wall had 12 gates. So if they're finished. And uh, I'm starting again. And uh, verse 12. And had a wall great and high. And had 12 gates. Right. And at the gates, 12 angels. 12 angels bounces at these gates. Right? right. Oh, yeah. And names written. Written thereon, names we know these gates, mm. which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. So who's gonna be in this city? Twelve tribes of the children. Of Very simple. So we're we at the, the place. Now we gonna have them. Go to Isaiah 14. They gonna be in the city. They're not gonna be in the same circumstances. They're not gonna be in the same position. They, they're not gonna be on the same level within the hierarchy of the Israel. You see what I'm saying? Because somebody gotta be the, the the dresser of your of your vineyard. Right? Somebody gotta be the, the tiller of their soil. Somebody gotta be the, the builder of the buildings in your nation, right? right? Somebody gotta be the paver of the streets that you talk about in gold, bro. Right? Somebody gotta be out there in that field like we would, right? And it's not gonna be us. It's not right. gonna be our kids, right? Our kids gonna be somewhere playing, right? Enjoying their life, right? Being able to, 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 to ride on lions somewhere, right? Our kids ain't gonna be responsible for survival work no more. Is this in the thousand years or after the final judgment? This is, what, what, what exactly? This time period, is this the thousand years or This is eternity. This is after we come into our land, after we, as soon as we enter into our kingdom, right? Slavery happens for everybody else. Immediately, after the thousand years, right, of that slavery that's going to happen, you're going to have a particular group of people who will be exterminated, which are the Edomites. The Edomites are going to be exterminated. After that thousand years, and then the rest of the nations 
for the most part, will be able to go back to their land, right? But they still are going to be in subjection to us, and we're still going to have service within our own land. You see what I'm saying? So we're going to have service of other nations as our inheritance within our land, then the ones that we're not utilizing, right? They'll be able to go back home and stuff like that after the thousand years. But at any time, we can come and, yeah, I need that. I need, I need, I need some service to the body. You see what I'm saying? So them people, it's going to be just like now, but instead of how it is, it's going to be righteous. So don't get this mystical idea of the kingdom of heaven, right? It's gonna be just like now, it's, it's, we're still gonna have businesses, we're still gonna, you know, it's gonna be earth, right? It's gonna be earth, but we're just gonna never sin again, right? We're just we're gonna never go into captivity again. We're just gonna never experience uh, so, uh, that, that different slavery and stuff like that again. We're never gonna experience that again, you know what I'm saying? Because we're gonna walk perfectly in the Lord under his new cover. You with me? Right, what you got? Hey, really going back to Revelation 7, okay. we're talking about the servants, we're talking about they're still in the, still in the elect, where we get that ideology from. This is Revelation 7 and 3 again. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, so we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. What that looks like is sealing the elect, like how we said, because of Isaiah 45 and 4. Right. For Jacob, my servant's sake, Jacob, my, my servant's sake. So as you can see, it says, sealing the servants of the Lord. The whole time, the only service are who? The people who descend from Jacob. You see that? Jacob, my servant's sake. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. And Israel, mine elect. So the elect and the servants are synonymous, and they are only the descendants of Israel. That's right. You see that, brother? All uh, praise. Yeah. No. Well, Isaiah. Okay. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter. Okay. Okay. The book of Daniel, uh, Daniel, the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. See that? Now the Lord is going to have mercy on Jacob, right? Right now, we don't experience that mercy. We experience that mercy to a degree, right? Because he could have been just had his life off this earth. He's been merciful and allowed our captivity to just be just enough to chastise us as a people to realize, right, that we've been doing wrong, right? But he said, what? Well, eventually that mercy is going to come, that real mercy right. that, that looks like the kingdom of him. Right? Go ahead. For, my, uh, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob right. and will yet choose Israel. And will yet choose Israel. 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 Will yet choose Israel, man. Go ahead. And set them in their own land. He's going to send us back in our own, our own land, right? Because right now we're not. Right? Somebody else is. Right? Go ahead. Set them in their own land, yeah. and the strangers shall be joined with them. Is what? And the strangers shall be joined with them. Yeah, so we're not acting like they ain't gonna be there. So they're gonna be joined with us, right? But go ahead. Join with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. They're gonna be cleaving. Then they're gonna know we the ones in power, right? Go ahead. Cleave to the house of Jacob, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place. Yeah, we're gonna take them and bring them to our place. Lord willing, we are the men, right? Go ahead. And the house of Israel, is what? and the house of Israel, the house of Israel, the Israelites, go ahead, shall possess them. Now what? Shall possess them. What does possessing somebody look like? What is that? What's another term for possessing somebody? Control. Say what? Control. Control. Okay, what's another word for having another people under your complete control? No, bondage. Say what? Bondage. Bondage to slavery. That's right. Get a brother hand. Right? Get a brother hand. It sounds like, sound like slavery to me, right? Uh, the whole thing? Nah. Oh, okay, uh, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them, shall possess them in the land of the Lord. In the land of the Lord is the kingdom of heaven, right? For servants, what? For, for servants, servants or what? For, for servants, servants, slave, and handmaids. handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. Everybody that we was under captivity, right? They're going to be our captives. They're going to, the roles are going to reverse. That's right. right. Everything's going to switch in the kingdom of heaven. You see that? Right now, they got their kingdom, they got their glory, they got their power. Right? They better live it up. They just short live. That's right. Because when we get our chance, ooh, they get back up on. They get back up on. They get back up Right? Go ahead. And, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall uh, and it shall come to pass in, in the day in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest. It says that in that day, right when we get the chance, 
to be able to have our our captors I mean, uh, into, in captivity. The people who were our captors, they get to go into captivity, right? It said, that's the day we get rest, right? Go ahead. From thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. And we get rest from all that hard bondage. They ain't gonna never experience that again. See that? All the things that happened to us is gonna be turned on to them, right? And we'll never have to think about, even think about the days of slavery again. That's right, what you got? This is the going into the blessing of Abraham too, right? This is Genesis chapter 22, verse 15. I'm gonna read all the way to 18. Uh, and, and, and the angel of the, and the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, Behold, said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. For because thou hast done this thing, and, and, and hast not withhold thy son. So this is showing this. The reason why the Lord blessed Abraham was because he was willing to be completely obedient unto him to the extent of sacrificing Isaac, his son. It's his only son that he gave a damn about. The Lord said, put that man on this fire, you're going to put him to death. You understand? Tying his son up, getting ready to put flame to his son. You understand, brother? He's going to roast his son for the sake of being pleasing to his God, right? But he said, well, because of this, because I see you are disfaithful, right? Go ahead. That in blessing I will bless thee. And in blessing I will bless thee. Because of you, you and your faithfulness, your obedience, your righteousness, right? To me, I'm going to bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven. And as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of, the, of his enemies. Said, and thy seed shall possess the gate. The gates represent the power, right? The, Right, all of it really, right? It says they shall possess the gates of their enemies. Right, go ahead. That's pretty much it. That's the that's the blessing that Abraham's seed is gonna get. The seed that comes through Isaac, the seed that comes through Jacob, the seed that comes through those twelve patriarchs, which are who? Blacks, Hispanic, Native Americans, Seminole Indians of indigenous descent, bro. That's right. I want you to understand that it's very important. Go ahead. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 10. Yeah. He that leadeth into captivity. He says what? He, he that leadeth into captivity. He said, he that leads into captivity. We know who led people into captivity. Right? We know who led us into captivity. The whole earth had a hand in our slavery. Right? Don't get it twisted. You see that Arab man? He just as bad as the, the so-called Caucasian. Right? right? You see that Chinese man? You see that Filipino man? Right? You see that, that Japhite man? They just as bad as the so-called Caucasian. Right? You see that East Indian man? You see that Ethiopian man? You see that Hamite, that African? Right? They just as bad as the Caucasian. What do you understand that, brother? It says, they that led the captive. Go ahead. He that led us into captivity right. shall go into captivity. They got to take their ass into slavery. Right? right. He that killeth with the sword. Yeah, he that killeth with the sword. Those people that kill black, Spanish, Native American with the sword. Go ahead. He that killeth with the sword. Must be killed with the sword. And the way around it. The Lord said they must be killed with the sword. Right, go ahead. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. They said his saints are patiently and faithfully waiting on a day that their captors are going into captivity. That the people who murdered and tortured their people are getting murdered and tortured. That's, That's right. right. Right? That's what the Bible says. Right? You see people going all through this giant. Look, we, we just weaving it properly together. Right? The truth is the truth. Right? The truth is important. We're going to strive for this truth to them like we were talking about earlier. Go ahead. This is Jeremiah 30, verse 16. Pick it up. Therefore, all they that devour thee. He says what? All they that devour thee. Every single one of them. He said, all they that devour thee. Shall be devoured. And all thine adversaries. Every one of them. Every one of them. Shall go into captivity. He says what? Shall, shall go, go into, into captivity. captivity. Every single adversary that we've ever had on this earth shall go into slavery. That's right. what it's saying. Who am I? Right? Who am I to say, no, the Lord is the righteous for wanting the vengeance that we so rightfully deserve to come upon the people that did us so bad? Who are, who are we to go against the words of the Lord? Right? right. I'm not the God. Right? I'm not going to go against the will of God.
Shalom, 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 family. First and foremost, I have to give all praises, all glory, and all honor unto the Most High God, Yahweh. Of course, I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. It's your brother, Ariyala of Sakari, and I am excited to present to you, the nation of Israel, the official Hebrew Israelite Bible. Now, this has been the culmination of four long years of hard work, and it is available for purchase at HIBOfficialZion.com. Get yours today. Oh, oh, oh.